Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, uh, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Give us a call, 208-991-4783. And follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Well, today's episode is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Thank you so much for all your support. And I particularly want to thank William and also Carla for their support, uh, sent along donations, and we will uh, have sent along access to our premium site, which we do for all donations of $7 or more. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Let George Do It, The Prairie Dog. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. <laughs> Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. The Prairie Dog, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Come on, give me my change. I'm trying to get the 515. Thanks. Oh, oh, excuse me. Pardon me, lady. Excuse me, that's my... All right, so it's not the 515. Well, look who wants to read the newspaper. (laughs) Who's following who, friend? You or me? Come on, loosen up. What are you... Hey, look out! Let go of my... Ah! It's Jerry Mace. Yeah, that's who it is, all right. Or was. One of my boys who went out to get the body said he thought he recognized him. Thought he was a friend of yours, Valentine. That's why I got you down here to my office so fast. Wait a minute, Lieutenant Johnson. Didn't he have any identification? Pockets were practically empty, Miss Brooks. Wallet, stuff in his side pocket gun. So he must have been slugged first, robbed, and shoved in front of the train. Huh? That's right, Miss Brooks. Otherwise, it might look like he'd just fallen or maybe even jumped off that station platform to kill himself. Sure, he was a nice guy. But you don't have to beat around the barn to prove it was murder. What do you mean? He just got a new job a couple of months ago. Private investigator for the independent insurance company. For what? Yeah, you heard me. Was anything at all left in his pockets? Handkerchief, a couple of theater stubs. Things are over there. He used to carry a blue notebook, George. Remember? That he'd write up his cases and... Jefferson theft case. Ah. I remember now. Insurance bulletin. Independent insurance company. Yeah. Yeah, that's the insurance company in the case, all right. What are you talking about? Swedish match killing. 50000 taken. And before that, the Prairie Bank job. All one man. Prairie dog, the boys call him. Clear it up, Lieutenant. Uh, the one man I've wanted to get more than anyone else in the world. Six unsolved crimes in the past two years. One of them a murder. Each time to the same guy. Dumb crimes. Clues all over the place. But we've never been able to catch him. What's that got to do with the independent... He's sloppy. Leaves cigarettes on the floor when he cracks a safe. Uses a funny black kind of Swedish safety match. Wears a pair of greasy gloves. Oh, we know lots of things, but we can't catch up. Lieutenant, I ask you what happened... His last crime was another robbery murder. That insurance company a friend here worked for got hooked. Oh, so that might have been the case Jerry was working on. Prairie pawn shop. What, George? Hock your shirt, we'll loan you another. Yeah, it's a pawn ticket. 
Slipped down through a hole in his pocket, I guess, into the lining of his coat. No date on it. Yeah, well, me, I'm going to find out for sure what Jerry Mace was working on. From the independent insurance company. It's after six o'clock, Lieutenant. I know their office will be closed, but in a little while I ought to be able to find somebody. What's the prairie? What is it? Didn't you ever hear it called that? Commercial Street, lower end, from front to third. You mean it's a district right here in town? Sure. In the daytime, it's industrial. Night's another matter. Shadows don't even trust the street lamps. Every man for himself and the devil has to pay admission. Yeah, nice place. That's where this prairie dog killer of yours comes from? Maybe, I don't know. That's why I want to check what Mace was doing. Okay. Come on, Angel, we're looking to... Where are you going, Valentine? To hock my shirt and see what I get in exchange. Closed, George. The shop's closed. Yeah. Anyway, I don't understand why you're so interested. Angel, why would Jerry hawk anything? He's always had all the dough he needs. Oh, well, unless he was interested in the place. Or unless somebody else's ticket he picked up for some reason. Or unless this place had some connection with the mission. Sixty bucks a month. What in the... You want it or don't you? Utilities paid until the fifth. Sixty in advance and I won't take a check. If you don't want it, loiter somewhere else. I'm nervous about the plate glass. Want what, for heaven's sake? I own the building. What do you think? I'm out walking for my constitution? Hold it, hold it, brother. The hock shop here is for rent? Yeah, tenant just closed up today. Name was Felix. Very substantial citizen. Always paid in advance. Can't you read the sign? Here. Here, yeah, George. Out of business. Door to let. Yeah, we didn't notice. All right, now you do. Think you want it? Let me know. Choice location. Yeah, sure. Well, George, at least this is one lead you can cross off your... What's the matter? I read you the sign. I'm reading between the cracks. Huh? Yeah, there's a light between the cracks. Premises aren't quite empty yet. Let's try one of the side street doors. Hello? Anybody here? He said the man's name was Felix, didn't he, George? Yeah. Hello, is anybody... So what are you doing here? So here, I guess. We're just... Shh, shh, shh. Come on, stop blowing your nose. I'm talking to somebody else. Yeah. Uh, take it easy, take it easy. Just want to see you, that's all, Felix. Can't you read signs? Now go away, stranger, I'm busy. Try more the next block. I don't want to hawk anything. Oh, here, like a smoke? Smoke is cheaper than eating, you know. Keeps the stomach quiet. Beat it, I said... You want a handout? Stick to soup kitchens. I've got an inventory. Ah, please, Felix. Listen. Uh, hey, tell me, uh, well, uh, somebody says you uh, loan money on uh, things. What do you think a hock shop does? Bake donuts? Yeah, but I mean... Uh... Stranger, for the love... Oh. What have you got? Wristwatch. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, my grandfather gave it to me. Wonderful man. Uh... Pretty valuable, don't you think? George. Yeah, Brooksy, watch this. Your grandfather, huh? Only, of course, it's a lady's wristwatch. I know. I guess he must have bought it for my grandmother, don't you think? He's a dunk. But all right, come out back here a second. Oh. He's a junker. Worth something sometimes, though, don't you think? You see, uh... Uh, your name Felix? Yes, that's right. What is this, open house? Well, we uh, want to see you, that's all. I know, everybody does. I'm out of business at the side door, too. If you a gentleman wish to discuss something, I'm... Uh... No, 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 give me that thing. And you stick around, tall boy. Sit down, sister, I'll only be a minute. Oh, uh, really, I could come back on... Give it to me, and... I said. Yeah. Get it here in the lights. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Look at that. Rhinestones aren't even real. Your grandfather got taken... Ah, shut up. Hello, Prairie Pawn Shop. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Oh, the same to you. But look, Sergeant, I'm locking up my place and I... Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, okay, let me have the description. Brown hair, skinny, short. <laughs> look, I've got other things to do than watch for a... Stolen wristwatch, huh? Wait a minute, you say the guy sniffles? Hey! Hey, you! Stop it! Stop it! Stop that guy! Officer, grab it! Uh, 
let somebody else wear himself down. Well, you were a great help, tall boy. Let him go. All right, so who cares? Great neighborhood, huh? Classy type of people. Sister, what do you think of having a shop where guys like that come in? What's the matter? I want to use this phone, that's all. Well, if it's all the same to you, I... Just looking, that's all. What's the idea? Well, the phone's dead, isn't it? Kind of a convenient call from his friend, the sergeant, would you say, Brooksy? I wondered why you brought that guy back in here. Look, Where's oh, the boy. button? Oh, yeah, here we are. Sure, step on the button, it rings. Not bad, not bad. Bum walks in, obviously trying to peddle a stolen watch. So you step on the bell and pretend to get a call from a police officer. And then the bum runs away, leaving you the watch. <laughs> nice, clear profit. Hot as steel from a thief. Great neighborhood. Classy type people. <laughs> All right, all right. It's no skin off of your neck, is it? No. Yeah, the prairie. Got to watch yourself in the clinchers in these parts, tourist. George, what did Lieutenant Johnson mean about Swedish matches? What? Look. And it's black, too. It was a safety match. Let me see that. Yeah. Now sit down, Buster. You and I are going to have a little no, talk. No, no, George. It was the other man, the sniffy one who dropped it. It was when he lit his cigarette coming in here, I remember. You sure? I'm positive. Come on. Headed up the alley, Valentine. I cut him off. Chased him three blocks since Felix gave his yell, but I lost him. Hey, listen, there's another cop's whistle. They must have got him on the next street. Oh, no, they haven't. He got down this side, then ducked in someplace just a second ago. Before... Oh! He's killing him! He's killing him! Through here, back of the barbershop. Yeah. You like to shave, huh? Well, I'll give you a shave. Close to the skin from down here. I'll show you coming into my shop. There he is. He's got him. All right, Tony, you can get off his chest now. <laughs> a lady I have under the machine. He come running into my shop. She could pull her hair out by the root. He was just trying to find a way through the alley, I guess. Oh, I catch him. At the Tony, catch him. I, I chase him. First to try to fight him. Stop waving that razor oh, around. I could slice his ear. All right, all right, we said. Come on. On your feet, Sniffy. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Much obliged. Uh, Oblige, he says. Only luck, mister. I still don't watch. I, I didn't do nothing. Oh, assault, battery, trespassing, scaring to death a woman under the machine. Keep your shirt on, Tony. There's probably a reward for catching prairie dogs. What? What are you talking about? I'm getting out of here. Oh, again. no, you don't. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, Sniffy, we'll forget the watch. You're under arrest for what's called suspicion of murder. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Listen to the difference. Yes, now you can actually hear authentic scientific proof of the difference between new RPM motor oil and premium type motor oils as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Auto engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings and during operation minute particles of radioactive metal wear off the rings. Hacker counters are thus able to detect the amount of wear actually taking place. Listen now as the Geiger counters click off the difference. First, the low wear rate of new RPM. Now, the much faster wear rate of the conventional oil. Now, new RPM again. You have just heard authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engines between major overhauls due to lubrication. Proved in the laboratory and checked out in severe road service, new RPM motor oil is sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. 
Six unsolved crimes in the past two years, all done by a man they call the Prairie Dog. Why? Well, because of the district they've occurred in, but also because of the robber killer's strange ability to remain uncaught. That is, until now. Because if your name is George Valentine, you've just delivered a suspect to Lieutenant Johnson. And the lieutenant is liking him more and more. There, you see that? File we've drawn up on all the prairie dog cases. Let's see. That same kind of match has been found in every single one of them. Why, I wonder? Because the guy's dumb, Miss Brooks. Also, because he smokes. <laughs> Big logic. No, no, look there. Each one was a robbery that took some time. Makes sense. Yeah. And one, a safe was blown, and another accommodation was worked out. Well, is Sniffy a clever enough man to... Guy gets nervous. He smokes while he works. Grinds his cigarettes out into the floor. Here. Like that. Always the same way. Oh, the janitor will love you. You can't buy those matches in stores. Try it sometime. Sniffy's cigarette was the same brand, too. Cheap, but not too popular. I didn't see any greasy gloves on him. That friend of yours, Jerry Mace, who got killed, was definitely working on finding the prairie dog. His office said he was working on a hot lead today, but they didn't know what it was. You'll have to say more than that, Lieutenant. Before you'll buy that it was probably the guy he was after who killed him? Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Or Sniffy can't offer a single explanation as to where he was at the time of any one of the prairie dog crimes. Also, we've already turned up a witness who says he saw Sniffy on that station platform this evening when Mace was killed. Why didn't you say so in the first place? How could a witness? Uh, That's why I didn't. For skeptics like Valentine, I'm waiting to get some more witnesses so I can... Come on, let's get down and see Sniffy, huh? All right, all right. If you don't believe me, watch him hammer the nails in his own coffin. Now, uh, you understand I want to cooperate all I can, gentlemen. Just a simple misunderstanding. Oh, I, I don't blame you. I... Well, how do you say it's going to happen? Why'd you steal that wristwatch you tried to sell to Felix Sniffy? Yeah, I, I'm glad you asked me, because I've been trying to explain to this other gentleman... Can it? Valentine, we can't find any record of it being stolen. Well, of course you can. See, my, uh, my grandfather... Can it, I said. Yeah, well, I just want you to understand. Now, I, I have stolen things before. <laughs> I've even been to jail for it. I... Certainly wouldn't do a thing like that again. Ah, so you've got a record, too, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll find it out sooner or later. I might as well be honest, don't you think? <laughs> uh, just like that business of the station platform, it's uh, uh, suddenly occurred to me that I was there this evening. Oh, is that so? Yeah, it was just hard for me to remember. It's, oh, not that I was there when any murder took place, but... Well, I find the inner urbans a very cheap place to sleep, and there are always plenty of newspapers to read, and... So, you see, I, I generally am at almost every station in town every day. Uh, speaking of coffin nails, Johnson... Oh, would you like a cigarette? Excuse me. Of course. Mm. Oh, thanks. No brand, huh? No matches, too. I only want to be helpful, that's all. Hold it. Where'd you get these? Didn't they take his stuff away from him, Johnson, when they dropped him in the fitted suit? Oh, I suppose one of the guys... Yeah, see. Yeah, get away from me. Don't... Hey, those are mine. You can't... Uh... Sort of full pockets you wear, Buster. Get out, Snippy. Candy bar, package of gum. Well, none of that stuff is worth more than a few cents. Not, not any of it. The man's got to be comfortable, doesn't he? Where'd you get it? Yeah, even a cigar. A what? Hey, that's mine. That's one of my cigars. Uh, a very good cigar, Lieutenant. I, I meant to thank you. But how in the love of... Our friend here is a pickpocket, Johnson. Simple as that. The big suspect. Oh, for peace. Of course, none of it's worth more than a few cents. You see, I've mended my ways. I wouldn't touch anything valuable. Telephone for you, Lieutenant. Yeah. Kill this guy for me, Valentine. Is it wrong for a man to like his little company? You uh, took this stuff from the guards, huh? From anybody who's been near you, right? Well, perhaps. Just like the uh, Swedish matches and special cigarettes you might have taken from anybody. Well, it's an embarrassing thing. But who? Come on, remember. Where'd you get those matches? I wish I knew. Might have been anybody, I guess. Anybody I bumped against. Oh, brother. Well, Felix himself, I suppose. Come to think of it, a man like Felix is much more the criminal type. Shut up. You, what? Go on, go on. We're letting you out of here. You've given me enough bad ideas for one night. Felix isn't the prairie dog. I can tell you that right now. Well, I was only... Because Felix happens to be dead. Murdered. Yeah, 
Lance Felix, all right. How about it, Sergeant? Another prairie dog, sir. Fits all the patterns. Been hit over the head. One instrument, grease stains on the paperweight there, same as on the briefcases. Motive robbery, huh? Sure, sure. A pirate like this guy, Felix, must have made a pretty penny oh, in his time. Oh, look out. Uh, don't stand there, sir. Huh? A couple of marks on the floor, that's all. Hey, where's this landlord? Did you find him? Yeah. Come in here, will you? Sure. Say, ain't this a tragedy, though? You show you never can tell. His name's Calgary, George. I've been talking to him in the other room. But I didn't say much. How could I? Left Felix here before you people came. You people saw never me. Never mind the alibi, friend. He says he was here helping Felix pack before, George. Pack? Yeah, going to Florida. Fly to Nassau. He made his pile. What do you mean? Going to retire. That's why he closed out his shop. Casting all the stuff he owned. Had a briefcase full of securities and stuff, and a roll of green goods in his suitcase that would have choked a horse. Who knew that Felix would be ripe for robbery right now? Jerry Mace, for one, George. Maybe that's why he was interested in Felix's place today. Yeah, I thought of that, but who else? Well, could... I guess most everybody in the neighborhood, friend, must have had some idea what was going on. Felix was a pirate. Wouldn't take much to figure he was worth knocking over. But knowing his exact schedule, the fact he'd be late in the shop tonight... Be leaving from here and so on, well, maybe not so many. Uh-huh. Bit more than just you, I suppose. Don't think I'd fall into that one, do you? I wasn't born yesterday, tourist. Now, Lieutenant, come here. T- take a look. Tennis shoes. Right? Or marks from them, I mean. The killer was wearing them. Uh, on the floor, you see? Same as in the last prairie dog case. Same type shoe. What are you trying to do, rub it in? Every time we learn more and more about less and less. Clues, clues. I just thought you'd want to know the pattern is so... Cigarettes, simple. matches, greasy gloves. But do we get any fingerprints? No, no. I tell you, this prairie dog is one guy who... Take wanted... it easy, Lieutenant. Valentine, he could be practically anybody in this entire city. He's killed two people today. And we haven't moved one inch closer toward catching him. Yeah, yeah, I got the general idea. Only then I changed it. Huh? I decided I've heard enough. And if I'm right about what I've heard, then it's all over but the shouting. Now, look, Master Suppose Mind. you and Caligari here just sit tight, and I'll be back later. Come on, Angel. Let's go to work on a prairie dog while he's still out in the open. see him, George. I hope we made it in time. Yeah, well, he had to change his clothes again. If he's not here, I don't know where we'd ever find him. Yeah, coming down the other steps. Hello, Sniffy. Ah, evening, miss. Well, welcome to the fresh air. No, wait, I, I need your help. Oh, sure. Yeah, some things I'm pretty handy at. Well, it's just helping my memory, that's all. <laughs> Wish I had one. <laughs> you know, I walked into this case because a friend of mine was killed by the prairie dog. He was getting too close, I guess. In fact, from the location of that railroad platform, he was probably on his way to see Felix. He'd nosed around there before, so I... I guess Jerry had practically figured what the next crime was going to be. That so? Or maybe he'd figured how simple all of these prairie dog cases really are. Figured the clues. Figured why the clues were always the same. I, uh, don't get any of this, mister. What I didn't figure until now was what it was I walked into myself this evening. When I walked into Felix's place, that's where the memory comes in. Yes, we walked in by the side door, and then we heard Felix moving around, and he spoke, and we thought he was speaking to us. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I was there. He's, you see, I had this watch my grandfather. Yeah, yeah, that's and... right. But I'm trying to remember what it sounded like when you and Felix walked into the back room. Remember? I do. I remember. Grandfather, huh? Only, of course, it's a lady's wristwatch. Yeah, I know. I guess he must have bought it for my grandmother. Yeah, a piece of junk. But all right, come on out back here for a second. Uh, pieces of junk are worth something sometimes, though. Uh, don't you think? Yeah. Two of you coming into the back room, but only one pair of footsteps. His. I don't get it. And I remember the same thing when he pretended to get that phone call and you ran. He didn't make any noise. I don't get it. I suppose you dragged that watch in just so he'd invite you to the back room. Where people would be less likely to see when you robbed and killed him. I don't get it. Why don't you say something different? 
What we walked in on was murder. That's the real reason you ran. What? You're worse than that lieutenant. I didn't kill Felix. Remember? I was in jail. You weren't in jail when Jerry Mace was killed. Huh? You don't understand why the same clues were always left by the prairie dog? Of course not. You're dumb like everybody else, so it never occurs to you those clues. The cigarettes ground out, the special matches, the greasy glove marks, the tennis shoes... Or only to make people think in terms of one man. But suppose the prairie dog is two men working together. And how to fool people. Not bad. Each would have an alibi one time or another. All sorts of neat ramifications. Huh. That's a pretty word. And you're trying to make something against me just because you think I was wearing tennis shoes. Well, you don't make sense. Look. That's left. Thus pair in a city dump. And don't the rest of your memory work? Felix gave a yell. The cops started after me. I've been in jail ever since. This is the same pair I got dragged in with. No spares in my pocket, see? That's why I'm so sure it's you. You've changed shoes. When? When could I change my shoes? What you had to change them. Your murder of Felix was interrupted by us, and there you were with all the evidence ready for planting. Well, you could save yourself on the matches and cigarettes by that little pickpocket exhibition in jail. But if you'd been caught with the shoes on, they would have hung you. So, I wish the pair of hard ones out of the air, mister, mister. When? When could I have? So simple it hurts, Buster. Because there's only one person who could be your partner. Only one person you could have given the evidence to so he could go ahead and kill Felix and get you off the hook as well as collect the loot. Only one person you could have run to when you knew the cops had you surrounded and it would nab you any second. The guy who caught you. That barber. Tony. Yeah? Is that so? <laughs> it's the only way it could work, Buster. Just like the only way Jerry Mace could have had his pockets emptied before he was shoved in front of that train. He couldn't have been slugged in public and then rolled and then pushed, could he? George, that's right. Yeah, Angel, we missed that before. His outside pockets were empty. In the crowd, the only way that could have happened was if a pickpocket did it before Jerry even knew he was there. So you hung yourself on that one, Buster, showing off your ability. Now, come on. We're going to go see the barber about a two-headed hair. Look out, Georgie! Thanks for giving me an excuse, Buster! the barber. George, no one would ever have guessed if he'd been given time to get rid of the things he stole from Felix. Yeah, a couple of pretty sharp boys, Angel. Like Sniffy's act of being a bum. Just a nuisance trying to resist the urge to pick pockets. The barber pretended to catch him. Last two guys anybody possibly suspect. Except you. Only way it could work. Well, that's the end of the prairie dog. Both of them. I thought the prairie might be a real place. Hmm. I mean, when Lieutenant Johnson first told us about it. Oh. Yeah. I thought for once we might be lucky. Because there's some nice places out in the desert. Real fancy places where there's sun and moonlight and things. Mm -hmm. You like those places? Well, it's a little nicer setting. I mean, for... Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know, Angel. You and I might get out there sometime. But who knows what might happen a bomb might go off. With warm weather coming on, it's wise to get your car all ready for spring driving. Motoring that's not only safe, but economical. There's one check you can make right now which may save you a good-sized repair bill later on. That's to drive into any independent Chevron gas station or standard station and have them check your front wheel bearings. These vital bearings should be repacked with fresh protective lubricant regularly. Badly adjusted or damaged bearings can cause excessive tire wear, pound out bushings and kingpins, make steering hard and dangerous, a real hazard to safe driving. So for your own economy and safety, take a look at your mileage since you last had your bearings checked. And if they're due for a repack, let the car savers lubricate them with RPM wheel bearing grease. Ask for this car saver service at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. <laughs>
Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Bob Jellison as Snoopy, Bill Conrad as Felix, Joe Forte as Caligari, Frank Gerstle as Mace, and Don Diamond as Tony. This music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, it's another one of those twisting, turning, uh, no, he didn't do it. Yes, he did, uh, murder cases. Uh, but uh, it's uh, successfully uh, resolved uh, following that old Sherlock Holmes rule uh, that uh, once you eliminate the imp- uh, impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, uh, is the truth. All right, well, we do have uh, one quick listener comment. Uh, Joel uh, said that... Uh, uh, episode 658, uh, Let George Do It, If uh, See Me Once, You See Me Twice, uh, said, excellent episode. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Joel, and I'm glad folks are enjoying Let George Do It and the rest of our uh, series. Well, that will actually uh, bring today's show to a close. We'll be back tomorrow with Sherlock Holmes, and then join us back here next week for another episode of Let George Do It. And, of course, uh, next Tuesday, it's Crime on the Waterfront. In the meanwhile, I'll send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and give us a call, 208-991-4783. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.